Have you ever wondered what are the main tools I use inside of Adobe Illustrator? As designers, we can use different tools for different things, and there are thousands of ways of creating the same thing. Like doing the same purpose inside of Adobe Illustrator, you ask someone else, they'll do it completely different. Well, today I'm gonna to walk through all the tools that I use and the settings that I use for 99% of my work inside of Adobe Illustrator. So if you're new to Adobe Illustrator, this should help you out a lot. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. If you wanna learn more about my Skillshare original, all about logo designs that is coming out very soon, then stick around to the end for the chance to watch it for completely free. Okay, so the first tool that I use predominantly inside of Adobe Illustrator is the pen tool. Here's a scroller box logo that I worked on for a long time. Back in the days of me doing this logo, it was fun. This was all hand lettered out and I used the pen tool with it. And the way that we sort of did it, I don't know if you can see, there's like an image in the background. And from here, I would go ahead, use this pen tool. I've got a video around how exactly I use the pen tool, uh, but it could be quite confusing for the first person starting, but it's like a system. So this pen tool allows me to create curves and lines precisely in Bezier curves. And that means that it uses mathematics and not pixels to map out the shape. So it can never get pixely because it is all in absolute vector format. This is just like a really rough version. It takes forever to actually create this with the pen tool because you've got to be really, really precise with it. But that is basically the pen tool right there. The second most used tool that I use is the shape builder tool. You might have heard this before, or you might have heard of the pathfinder tool, which are very similar. So the shape builder tool in essence is taking two shapes. So one shape that will knock out or delete an area of another shape. This allows us to use geometric shapes like circles to do this, or it allows us to add other shapes as well. So if we take this black circle and we want to knock out of this square, then we just highlight them both. And then I'm going to press shift and M or go to the shape builder tool over here. And you can see my cursor has got this plus or minus on it. Now, if I hold option or alt, it will change from a minus to a plus. And what this means is that when I drag over it, when it's in minus, so when I hold alt, it's going to get rid of the shape. But if I drag on top like this, it's going to add to the shape. So this allows me to create cool logos. I mean, right here, it's just an example, but you can create many cool logo designs through this and in creating new things for it. For example, this logo that I've shown you before, which is an old client logo, was created using the Shape Builder tool, knocking out shapes and bringing shapes together. You can also do this with the Pathfinder tool, which I still use because it's kind of like the old version of the Shape Builder tool. It's like a function and you have to memorize each one of these shape modes. But basically you've got Unite and Minus Front, which are the main two that I use. So I can go Minus Front and it will do the same thing or we could press unite which will do the same thing now a setting that i use which you guys need to use if you want to get into logo design is do not scale or don't scale stroke now a stroke is basically this it's a, a line on the bezier curve it's not this but it's this the line and what happens is when we scale this down in the normal settings is that it's going to scale with the normal stroke width it's going to scale that down so you can see it's 16 points we can scale this so it's always going to be 16 points. Now, if I go to preferences and I turn on scale strokes and effects, what happens is it's going to keep that stroke to what it looks like optically. So you can see when we go down, the stroke has actually gone down to four. We don't want that because what happens is when we start scaling different things around and about like this, it's not going to be the same. We want to make sure that scale strokes and effects, it's always the same no matter how we manipulate this shape. And this allows us to create other shapes in the same and edit it so it has the same width all the way around. A big tool that no one really uses, but I use a lot anyway, is offset path. Now let's say we have a shape here. We have this blue, this nice blue shape. Nice blue. And I want to create a circle on the outside of it, but I want it to be a different color. Well, what I do is I go to object path, offset path. And what this will allow me to do 
is create an offset of my choice. You can see there. I can press OK. Then I can change the color of that offset like so. Now, in my upcoming Skillshare original class, I talk about this a lot. In fact, I use this logo that I've created and I wanted to knock out some parts of this circle in the same line as this line here. So what I do, I press copy, I go to object, path, offset path. I create the offset to around where I want it, somewhere like this. I do this, I go ahead and I knock out the areas that I don't want it to affect. Like so, I just erase them. I go ahead and get rid of this one because we've already copied it. Highlight it all and we just knock out the shapes that we don't need and I paste it back in directly so now we have a shape with a cutout there that's a good way of using the offset tool and I talk about that in my Skillshare original class another tool I use a lot is the repeat grid and this is a new one but I used to use a form of this prior but basically what this does is it allows me to repeat stuff all the time so we've got this circle here let's make it into like a teardrop or something strange like this and we want to create like a pattern or a repeating thing with it. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go to object, repeat, radial. And it gives me this sort of like cool system and tools to create a nice pattern if I wanted to. So I could change how big it is going to be, how many we can add in, where they start and stop. And then from there, I can just go to object, expand, expand and we've got my shapes right there and you can do this in many other different ways there's loads of different like sort of grids that you can use the radial grid the mirroring it's a very easy to use tool for like creating cool patterns now let's say you're working with a stroke so we've got like the square and we're going to make it into like a logo or whatever uh, but we don't want it to be a stroke anymore we want it to be an actual shape that we can mess around with sort of like this where if we go to outline mode it's not just a line but it's actually a closed shape. Well, all I do is I generally copy and paste it by holding Alt or Option and dragging it. I go up to Object, Path, and then Outline Stroke. And you can see if I go into the Outline mode, the difference, the strokes, basically we've got two Bezier lines instead of one. Now this is destructive because now we can't really change or do anything like this without it going a bit weird. As you can see, it's not forming in the same way but when you need to minus things out of it like using the shape builder tool it becomes a lifesaver an obvious one that i use a lot as a logo designer is a line so if i've got three different shapes here or whatever and i want to basically align one of them to the middle i'll press this align you can see what happens there all the three shapes have been aligned to the center if i groove them together and align them it will align it to the center of my artboard. Now, if I wanted to align these shapes into one of the other shapes, for instance, I can highlight all the shapes, click again on another one, and it will put like this extra line around it. And I can just press align horizontally. Then I can align center. And you can see all my shapes are on that one that I selected. If you're new to Illustrator, you may not know, but the idea of text is that here, it's like you can change it, you can edit it. This is my font lockdown sounds, which you can purchase over in the link in the description. But here it's seen as text. You can't really edit it, even though it is vector. So how do we get it to become vector? Well, simply just take your text. I'm gonna just copy mine. We can right click and then press create outlines, or we can command shift and O, and that will create outlines. So what this means is that we can like edit the text as like a vector shape. The problem with this though, is that you can no longer edit it with the text editor. So now it's an actual shape. It's very destructive. So I would always suggest copying and pasting. And the last tool was more of a setting actually that I use is the view tool. Like I don't view Illustrator in the same way. This is the classic view. So the Illustrator you're seeing is probably a bit different. If you go to window and go to workspace, I can go to the essentials here. And this is probably what you're seeing, uh, the essentials, or maybe you're seeing something else. So in this workspace, I always go to the essentials classic because this is what I'm used to. It gives me all my tools at the top that I need to go to. And I don't like having all of my properties on the right hand side. I like to move everything around. On my screen, I have layers, artboards, align, pathfinder, and swatches, which you can find all up here in the windows. If you just click one of them on, it will pop up and you can drag them 
anywhere on your screen so you can really customize your setup. I just want to take a minute to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but not only that, thank them for coming into my studio and filming an original class where we talk all about generating ideas for logo design. It's an amazing class if you are new to logo design or even if you're a seasoned professional that just struggles still to come up with good logo design ideas. The great thing about this class is that it's not only all about generating ideas is how to do it without feeling pressured and how to do it in a fun way so it's a really relaxed environment i've got methods that no one else uses as well which actually works some of you guys if you really know me will know a little bit about them but if you would like the chance to watch this for completely free i've got a link down below which gives you a full month free of skillshare premium where you can watch that class so in essence, you're getting this class for completely free. After that, it's only less than $10 a month to have Skillshare, and you can watch anything from cooking classes, anything from painting, photography, client management, cleaning, design, poster design, anything you think is a skill, it's on Skillshare and taught by a Skillshare tutor. Now my class might not be out yet, so you can still click the link and it will be out very soon on Skillshare. I will let you know. But if you would like to watch any of the classes from this ginormous, amazing learning community, then go ahead, click that link. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Make sure to subscribe, share the video with your friends, comment down below. What tools have you just found out that you can use? And I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye. Shh.